नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ द राइट स्टैंड लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन फर्स्ट अप मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली दैट वी वांट टू थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर मेकिंग अस नंबर 1 थैंक यू फॉर मेकिंग अस नंबर 1 ट्रस्टिंग अस एंड बिलीविंग इन आवर न्यूज़ कवरेज फॉर मोर देन 22 वीक्स नाउ and we have far outshone the competition and it is all thanks to you a 38.4% overall share and leaving competition far far behind they are struggling to even keep pace with us ladies and gentlemen and we are being able to set the benchmark set the pace thanks to you thank you for your patronage thank you for your viewership and we are on your side that's the reason we are cnn news 18 Now this evening on the right stand we are going to focus on various angles five exclusive angles that we would bring to you that shows the reason why this comprehensive crackdown on the PFI was important this was a threat to bharat this was a threat to change or an attempt to change the very dna of our country this was a devious attempt to try and destabilize india's growth story that is the reason why this group which has its roots in terror outfit simi indian mujahideen which has its connections to entities that are a bane on humanity the world over that is the reason why this group and its workings had to be contained had to be curbed and more importantly it had to be cracked down weeded uprooted once and for all that has been the attempt in perhaps what is the largest ever crackdown internal security wise that has ever happened in our country simultaneously across 13 states more than 106 people arrested right from the top leadership to the grassroots worker involved in any leadership or organizational role with this organization and its various uh, offshoots it's a comprehensive crackdown ladies and gentlemen that's been undertaken first up the mega exclusive as far as the inside track on this pan india operation let's try and understand this pan india operation the recce and planning it's been underway since june 2022 more than 3 months have gone in planning for this entire crackdown one week ago all locations verified targets were checked then if you were to go raid teams to non bjp states were actually given crpf cover nia led the raids the enforcement directorate sent down at least 40 officials who would crack down on those involved in financial crimes like uh, uh, money laundering and of course 12 am that is midnight nia teams including the dg in control room ib director tapan deka was in the ib control room at around 1 am the nsa ajit doval himself was in the intelligence bureau control room looking at manning the operation so right from the very top the operations were manned as it was a pan state pan pan india multi state raid where all did the raids take place of course kerala which is the hub of pfi's activities it's its nerve center 39 locations there tamil nadu 16 arrests andhra pradesh 16 arrests so the raids that have taken place and the arrests that were made telangana there was raid in one place uh, west bengal there have been arrests and raids there have been arrests and raids in rajasthan and in delhi and in uttar pradesh three people arrested in delhi so uh locations if you were to see it's pan india the spread is across more than 13 states right from assam and manipur in the northeast of the country all the way towards the west maharashtra rajasthan even madhya pradesh was involved goa there have been raids karnataka telangana andhra pradesh so all across the country wherever the pfi had spread its operations and its wings it has been cracked down that's what has happened 90 plus locations and uh, if you were to see the total numbers are there for you this is what stands out ladies and gentlemen so this is the information that we have at this point before we go to the next big story what i told you is that we will cover five interesting big angles why there is a solid case 
for a comprehensive crackdown shutdown of PFI and its entire organizational base and its operatives. But before that, we just uh, set up the debate for today and also introduce our guests before we go across to the big exclusive here on this edition of The Right Stand. So it's a comprehensive PFI crackdown. Was this the most important and necessary bit? Let's try and understand that. Joining us this evening, we have uh, Sushant Sareen with us, SP Vaitsaab, Aarti Tikku is there, Abhijit Majumdar is there, Mr. N.K. Sood, and of course, Ratan Sharda ji. Namaste and thank you very, very much to everybody for joining us. And now, let me bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, information, courtesy our investigations editor, Manoj Gupta, who I must commend for uh, being the first to alert the entire news team, the entire network editing group that these raids are happening and this crackdown is happening and the various dimensions. And of course, the other team, including Ashish Merishi, Arunima, Ananya, and so many of our reporters on ground who have kept us ahead right through the day in this perhaps biggest ever crackdown that's happened. So let's move on. This is the mega exclusive on PFI and its terror linkages to global terror outfits. So first up is the ISIS or the Daesh. At least 15 PFI cadre are currently part of the Islamic State. Abdul Rauf, PFI close associate of Mohammed Shelji of the ISIS. He supported ISIS logistically and financially in Syria and also in Khorasan. Abu Tahir of the PFI went to Syria for Hijra and later joined the Daesh. Then, Chalad Noor. Chalad Noor is a PFI arms trainer who also joined the Daesh. Then, PFI Kader are also present right now in IS Khorasan in Afghanistan. Abdul Ghayoum and others are part of this group. Now let's look at the next terror outfit, Ansarul Bangla team, that is the ABT. Members visited Murshidabad, met PFI leaders. This is also as per top government sources who have given this information to our investigations editor Manoj Gupta. They met PFI leaders. They coordinated on strategy and spread of PFI's activities. Then the faces, they back Nasar Madani, accused in the Bengaluru serial blast case. So again, giving cover fire to those accused in terror activities. They run social media accounts and channels seeking Madani's release. They follow multiple radic Isla, radical Islamic scholars like Sayyid Abu Maududi and Alama Iqbal. Also, PFI took over its agenda after Simi ban in 2001. So they have offshoots. Uh, for, uh, founder members of the PFI are erstwhile Simi members. PFI Vice Chairman E.M. Abdul Rahman was Simi National Secretary. PFI NEC member Professor P. Koya was a Simi member. PFI member Rashid Sheikh is ex-Simi member. Plotted Pune blast. Enough and more evidence that this lot is up to no good. They are highly radicalized and they have pan-Islamism as the offshoot or the bedrock of their activities and their thought process altogether. Let me start with Mr. S.P. Waid. S.P. Waidji, many people are saying, is this uh, too late or is it timely? But the five exclusive angles that nail the PFI... You know, comprehensive PFI crackdown. But Mr. Waid... How would you see this crackdown? Do you think this has been, this is comprehensive, this is well planned? It's taken some time, but they have done it well. It is no doubt about it, uh, Mr. Narsimhan. Very well planned, very well coordinated, and uh, very well uh, uh, researched uh, before laying hand. And uh, such operations require time. Such operations require uh, uh, a detailed investigation. Uh, such operations require a lot of planning, a lot of surveying, a lot of surveillance, a lot of uh, uh, inputs from uh, uh, within the country and outside. Uh, you need many intelligence inputs uh, 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 dealing with external intelligence as well as internal intelligence. You need coordination with state police forces, the investigating agencies. And I think uh, it has been, though... Many of us felt why government is not acting, uh, but then finally 
uh, i'm glad uh, such a uh, terror outfit should not only be banned it should be decimated in india it's because it's against the very idea of india against as you write they put five things uh, uh, against india's growth story against bharat against uh, 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 the internal security of the country and i, I think uh, such an organization should should be decimated not only uh, it uh, uh, followed by a ban order because it can take uh, new names you yes. need to arrest all its cadres seal all its offices choke uh, its all funding seize all its accounts that is the kind of operation uh, which is i think taking place and that is that requires a lot of planning though little late uh, but finally it has uh, i am glad it has happened but the t- the test of legal scrutiny is going to be a big challenge sushant ji a lot of the information is there in public domain some of the inputs that we have got from the government in terms of intelligence inputs and information this will all go into the dossier and the case that is going to be made against the pfi one aspect is that they have not banned the organization yet first the crackdown has happened now have they also been able to dry the of resources because this lot has been able to raise huge amounts of money to fight cases legally they also have a battery of lawyers and they also have international support we'll get to that in just a bit but where do you stand on this crackdown sushant ji uh, anand the first thing is that i am very pleasantly surprised that uh, the government of india and the security agencies have stopped leaking like a sieve because earlier if uh, there was an operation uh, which was being planned and which was actually being executed over almost 3 months before their final uh, you know uh, they finally swooped down on these guys uh, there were some rumors that you know some action is could be taken stuff like that that there is an impending uh, or an imminent ban which could be imposed but nobody really uh, got uh, the whiff of such a large scale operation a well coordinated operation across virtually the length and breadth of the country so i think uh, all congratulations to the investigating agencies for keeping it under the wraps and then just moving in for the kill in one go hmm. uh, having said that uh, should this have been done earlier i think this should have been done 10 years back hmm. uh, when the first indications came of what kind of an organization the pfi yes. was hmm. i think we have been extremely remiss as a country Uh, to have allowed this organization to spread its tentacles uh, to uh, to uh, you know infiltrate into various organizations to actually uh, instigate and incite violence uh, to uh, to indoctrinate a whole lot of people before this action has been taken so i i would definitely say that it has it is rather late in the day but hopefully uh, we can still limit the damage this organization is going to cause which then brings me to the question that you brought up now mm. i would imagine uh, anand that the fact that there was so much of clamor mm. and not just for the last 3 or 4 months but for many years now that action needs to be taken i would imagine that the government has uh, probably collected enough information mm. uh, to uh, justify not just the crackdown but i think the ban which is quite imminent now Hmm. Uh, and then to be able to prosecute these guys in a court of law uh, and uh, procure sentences against them i would imagine that they would have procured uh, enough material to be able to do all of that and that takes time that's hmm. laborious work because you know as somebody like uh, mr vair is sitting out here uh, and i can't speak too much in uh, front of him given hmm. his experience but very often what uh, used to happen in the past was that you know it was a knee jerk kind of a reaction you arrested Correct. people and then you never built up the case mm. i think out here i suspect and i hope that uh, you know the various tentacles uh, of this organization are going to be exposed that prosecutable evidence uh, will have been procured uh, and that it will then lead this case to its logical conclusion so i think mm. uh, if if that is what has taken uh, time Uh, then that I, i think that that is something which can be condoned uh, but finally i think mm. we should never underestimate the enemy and i don't think there is any other way of putting um, uh, you know what an organization like the pfi is it is an enemy of the indian people uh, mm. and an organization like this will have support from outside india it will have support from all kinds of dubious characters and uh, dubious states across uh, the world 
uh, which have an interest in undermining India's security and stability. Mm. And I think many of those will try and fund these guys. There are enough uh, elements within India, mm. uh, you know, who think uh, or who profess or who pretend to be very liberal, very progressive, very secular. Uh, and all of these words are very noble, but they've been turned into cuss words and four letter words by these characters. Mm. And they will try and defend an organization like the PFI uh, and all its activities uh, under the rubric of, you know, this for secularism, for liberalism, mm. uh, for progressive values. And of course, the weaponization of democracy against democracy itself. Mm. So I think we need to be very careful about all of that. Mm. Uh, I'm hoping that the government will be. Uh, and we'll take this to the logical conclusion. Fingers crossed on that. Well, uh, absolutely. N.K. Suji, quick, uh, we've got one more big input uh, of uh, the connection of the PFI with another uh, big international outfit, which is again, uh, its agenda is pan-Islam. I'll come to that in just a bit, but N.K. Suji is somebody who's, whenever he's come to the right stand, he's always taken this position that the PFI is the bane of a lot of our problems in terms of social unrest and social strife. And kai 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 jagai se tar jode hoi hai. So today, uh, Mr. Sood, you've called for a comprehensive crackdown. It has happened. Do you think it's been executed well? Ki pehle case banaya, phir tayari ki gai, coordination kiya gaya, phir crackdown hua. Rather than the other way around. It's not knee jerk. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. Actually, the government or the agencies, they have waited for a long time. Hmm. We were expecting that in 2020, something big will happen against uh, PFI. Hmm. But our government agency, they waited. Now, you say that the agencies were waiting for the past three months. I think the government and agencies were waiting for the past two years to make out a good case. Hmm. And this case has been made out. After this case has been made out, all this action has been taken. Hmm. Now, PFI, I don't think the PFI will get much support. Of course, the only bothering point is the PFI that will be getting support from inside India, hmm. not from the Muslims, but from certain political parties. Hmm. Already, Ahmadi party has come in support of PFI. The hmm. leaders have started making some statements, which is very unfortunate. Hmm. But as far as other countries are there, some people point out their fingers towards the Gulf. I don't think anybody in Gulf supports PFI or an, any activities against India, within India, by Muslims or any other organization. Hmm. Only country besides Pakistan is Turkey. Hmm. You see PFI people, Koya, P. Koya and one more uh, PFI yeah. senior person, senior executive person, they had visited Turkey in October 2018 yes. to seek their support. After going to there, they had met, met IHH, hmm. which, is, which is a militant organization in Turkey and uh, MDI. Hmm. The Turkish intelligence, they had arranged this meeting. Hmm. So, after, and especially the Turkish president and the people concerned with his family, they have links with the ISS, hmm. Al Qaeda. Russia in 2016 had made a complaint with the, at the UN. Hmm. They had complained, they written, made a written complaint to the UN about uh, IHH. Hmm. They said they were, they had links with the Al Qaeda. Correct. They have links with ISS in. Syria. Hmm. So, the, all these things are there and you see the only country besides Pakistan who is supporting hmm. Pakistan in Kashmir is t Turkey. Hmm. Turkish president has been making un uh, 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 this kind of statements. Hmm. They are fanatics. They want to create peace, they want to disturb peace in India and other countries. Hmm. They do not support <coughs> the legal and peaceful activities. So, this, this is the issue that India is going to take and India is aware of whatever is happening there. Right. And I think whatever the Turkey does or the Pakistan right. does, what our government is alert, aware and they know what to do and when to do. And they so, have done the right thing now. No, you are a former ex, uh, you are a former RNW officer and that's why khabar se pehle aapne khabar bata di. We are just going to come to that aspect the, as far as the international aspect, the pan-Islam is the aspect. Mr. Sood, this is the other aspect. The connection or the similarity between the PFI and the Muslim Brotherhood. Let's go across to this exclusive angle that we want to put out here on the right stand. Well, this is the this is the aspect as far as the connection with the Muslim Brotherhood. This is the big uh, uh, aspect. The, the ideology is the same. One is politicize Islam. The other objective is the unity of Ummah. So, the same objectives, re-establishing world Islamic caliphate. Now, we as Achyutanandan and the Kerala government back in 2009-2010, if I remember correctly, had said that the objective of the PFI is to convert Kerala into a totally Islamic state in the next 20 years.
Now, the Mission 2047 document that was found and the intelligence those who say, shared with us, that document talked about turning India into an Islamic state by 2024, 2047. So this pan-Islam, this entire aspect of establishing a caliphate, all of this is there. Now, look at the nomenclature parallels. The MB Kader or Muslim Brotherhood Kader are called brothers. The PFI Kader are called Banda. Banda is brother. So, so that's the kind of uh, uh, parallels you can draw. Quid pro quo. PFI and the Jamaate Islami key conduits to Muslim Brotherhood's India influence. There are direct linkages in the Middle East. PFI in close touch with the Muslim Brotherhood's Turkey chapter. N.K. Sudji just talked about Turkey and Turkey's involvement. PFI has ties with the Muslim Brotherhood's Mohammed Mahdi, Yusuf Al Karadwi. PFI fundraising programs are in the Middle East with the help of Muslim Brotherhood's uh, Yusuf Al Karadawi. So the connection with the Muslim Brotherhood also stands established. So this is far, far greater in terms of the dynamic, a pan-Islam, ummah, Islamic, uh, you know, caliphate kind of an agenda here. Abhijit Majumdar. Yes, Anand, uh, it, it's a terrific action, uh, a day of terrific action today. Uh, the only thing is that this has to have uh, equally uh, determined follow-up in terms of, uh, you know, legal, plugging the legal loopholes, finding the, I'm sure the agencies have been uh, working this group for a long time, so uh, they, they have been also uh, uh, they are familiar with the money bills, uh, you know, where the fund coming, etc., etc. Uh, the thing is that DFI is is just, you know, is, is a name. Yesterday it was Simi, then it was uh, Indian Mujahideen, then uh, you know, uh, we have PFI. Something else may come up uh, uh, tomorrow. Hmm. You know, you uh, remember when ISIS came up. It made started making look, uh, uh, you know, Al Qaeda look like a particularly a great NGO and uh, nothing more. Hmm. Uh, so you know, unless unless you smash the head of the snake, unless you decimate the whole idea that BFI actually is constructed built on, hmm. you know, uh, this is going to be futile. Having said that, if the government has taken so much time and has. Uh, you know, taken such amazing coordinated action across uh, what uh, 15 states now? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, 13 to 15 states. Correct. Um, I think I think they have done their homework. And uh, but there is another point I uh, want to make here. Mm. That you know, the hardcore radicals, of course, you know, many of them have been caught. Many. Uh, uh, you know, many will be uh, caught. A lot of underground activists, terrorists, etc., will be caught. You know, there should be a watch out for people who have, you know, who have been fronting the PFI agenda in media, academia, everywhere. You know, in uh, protests like CA, where ED said that you know about uh, you know uh, 100 crores uh, flowed in India. Uh, uh, hmm through the PFI. So, you know, this overground system, you know, one should keep a very tight, uh, this thing on, uh, you know, monitoring of that. I'll mm. tell you, I'll, I'll just read out one para from the PFI document, the yeah. uh, India Vision uh, 2047 document mm. uh, that the in agencies had uh, got. Correct. It says, party should utilize concepts such as national flag, Constitution and Ambedkar to shield the real intention of establishing an Islamic rule and to reach out to STs, STs, OBCs. We would reach out to executive and judiciary and also strive to infiltrate our members in at all levels in order to gather information and get favorable outcome in matters of our interest. So. Mm. No, you you can guess how sinister it is. Yeah. You know, it so says create grievances where there are none. So it it needs to the whole ideology needs to be attacked. Mm. No, and not just that, uh, Arthi ji, you've also written about it, you've covered the activities and you're one of the first people uh, in, uh, in the journalist fraternity for a while who've been saying that why is there not a comprehensive crackdown. So, but the, the other aspect, look at the thought process, how diabolic they are. And the way the organization works, it looks very benign on the face of it. Even when you meet them, they look to be very, very harmless. 
But look at their intent. Anand, uh, I have to compliment uh, Home Minister Amit Shah for taking this bold decision for executing the plan and preparing for it for such a long time. But at the same time, I do want to put this on record that this is the misfortune of India, mm. this country, that it took us so long to come to this point. You see, the fact is that any Islamist radical organization is given a long rope to do, to fulfill its agenda, which is essentially the establishment of Sharia and establishment of the Islamic rule. And the whole, you know, idea of of a regressive, regressive nation, uh, regressive Khalifa, unless and until you crack down on such organizations, such people, such ideologues, you are essentially, in a way, encouraging that idea to be. That would happen in India for such a long time, whether it was Simi, whether it was Indian Mujahideen, whether it was uh, SDF, SDI, and all these, you know, different versions of uh, popular of India. Hmm. All these groups and all the ideologues, they have been given so much freedom, so much freedom to battle hatred, hatred against Hindus, hatred against the uh, other communities. And essentially what all has done is created hostility and animosity between Hindus and Muslims. Hmm. This has been my, you know, biggest beef with every government in India for the last so many decades that why are we giving them so much freedom? They are exercising all the fundamental freedoms that Indian constitution gives us. They are using Indian democracy hmm. to subvert it, to subvert hmm. the idea of India that we have, an idea of India which is enshrined in the constitution. So my issue really is hmm. that for the first time, the government of India, Home Minister Amit Shah has shown the will and determination that India can do it. India can shut down the shop of hmm. communal polarization, communal hate and animosity, which is created by Islamic radical groups. Yep. That is the bottom line. These Islamic radical groups operated exactly the way operating has been operating for a while. This is how it operated in Kashmir. So, and yep. saw what happened with when you gave a free hand hmm. to all the Islamic radical groups, you ended up having a massacre, a genocide, an ethnic cleansing of Kashmiri Hindus in Kashmir. Hmm. You wiped out the Islamic radical groups, wiped out an entire indigenous community in Kashmir. Yeah, that's what will you what you will get if you give a free hand, a long rope to. Uh, Radical outfits. Like so I would say hats off to Home Minister Amit Shah that he has shown this resolve, and I think it is also going to bring, you know, the the well meaning, the well intentioned uh, Muslims who want to live their life in peace and in a pluralistic India, and who identify themselves as part of the Indian civilization. Mm. So I think it is important to segregate fundamentalists within Islamic society, within Muslim society in India, segregate them completely, isolate them completely and have Muslims who see themselves as Indian nationalists first, mm. uh, more than anything else, mm. and give them a chance to, you know, prosper in peace and harmony with other communities in India. I think this is a great initiative, great effort made by the Home Ministry. Uh, hats off and I well, hope they this say the case is brought to a logical conclusion. Exactly. Uh, and it happens soon. Ex exactly. Because well begun is half done. It's only half done. The other half is left because the burden of proof is on prosecution. Even if it is the, uh, the conditions slapped at UAP and PMLA, where the accused have to be proved, uh, have to prove themselves uh, innocent because you're guilty till proven innocent, but still the courts will, uh, they will have to make a very strong case in the courts. Somewhere one gets the feeling that they have taken the last one and a half to two years to build a very, very strong case, a watertight one where charges will stick on those who have now been arrested.
Let's hope that works. Before I bring in Ratan Sharda ji, here is one more angle, ladies and gentlemen, the inner workings. The inner workings of the PFI. We get you details of the inner workings of the PFI. This is how organized and structured they are. OMA Salam is the chairman. That's the core leadership. The vice chairman is EM Abdul Rahman. He's the general secretary, and the general secretary is Anis Ahmed. So Anis Ahmed has been one of the at the forefront of rebutting all the charges against the PFI. He's their uh, more seen face. Uh, VP Nasiruddin is one of their secretaries. So these are the various secretaries: Afsar Pasha and Mohammad Shakif. So these are the secretaries. So that's the organizational structure. Then the core committees. PFI operations are handled by 15 different councils. Key operations are run by four departments, four major departments. There is the expansion department, the guidance department, the spy department, and they also have a physical training department. Then they have overseas wings. Where all do they have overseas wings? They have overseas wings in Saudi Arabia, which is run, uh, which is headed by Sharafuddin Pazehari. Then they have overseas operations in the UAE that's headed by Noshad in Oman it's no it's headed by Ashfaq in Qatar you have Dr Taj Alwa who's running the operations and of course uh, after that in Turkey which is run by NM Kuryakal so this is largely in the gulf in this region where they have their operations and the turkey operations have been very very active in the recent past ladies and gentlemen So let me go across to Ratan Sharda ji and ask him. Ratan Sharda ji, the PFI believes they are the mirror, the Muslim mirror for the RSS, and they believe RSS is the bane of their existence. They are only going after the RSS. Why have you turned them into anti-national and anti-India? Their activities are only against the RSS. That's what they do. Even when they celebrate the Mopla riots and the Mopla massacre, a hundred and two years later. they turn they walk around with the rss figurines because saying this is how we'll treat the rss see pfi represents the global threat of islam the radical islam of the global nature where you find riots against hindus in birmingham in leicester you find them in kashmir or you find them in kerala bengal hmm. so this is the basic nature and this happened even before rss was born so let us not uh, you know take their word for what they are talking about because it is basic very nature of how the pfi works because that is how the radical islam works i will just dismiss at that point hmm. my larger point is as i said is a global effort to dis- you know create trouble across the world with every non muslim group whether it's jews whether it's uh, christians or anybody else hmm. now i would first of all i am very happy that three most difficult to please people like mr bair mr mm. shant sarin and mr sood mm. uh, have been very positive about this development mm. that gives a lot of heart that that makes me believe something is definitely right mm. and coming to the reason why these people survived mm. i will come go back to your own first statement that madani mm. who was in what who was accused in the bomb blast serial blast in koimtur yeah. was Give pass the resolution was passed in Kerala Assembly, mm. which was supported by all the parties, including Congress, Muslim League, leftists, mm. to give him a bail. Mm. If this is the kind of support they get, now Congress would have said this at uh, this uh, at uh, this uh, raid on PFI is diversionary tactics. Mm. So indirectly, when you got people who will give cover fire to these people, definitely government will do much more hard work. Then normally would be required to tackle these people. Correct. And I can definitely say this highly. well organized operations one thing uh, my point is that the gloves are off hmm. the sh- shaheen bag mentality the th- tablighi jamaat uh, jamaat mentality of letting people carry on with what they want to carry on hmm. and be benign to them has been given up is iron uh, iron fist now and i believe that this is not a small step this is a they, they have taken it a resolve to crush the very mentality hmm. because banning see me when create one more person something as the ideology is more important which can create such uh, multi uh, headed monsters hmm. so this is an effort to simply crush the entire global network where you got people right from bangladesh to middle east to feed each other and to spread the propaganda and this started way back 2012 when we saw the most horrendous riots across india not against just the local people or specifically against northeast to protect the rohingyas mm. at that time also it was the technology was used and uh, me street power was used so when you are trying to crush it has to be at one comprehensive level i think this is the biggest operation 
ever after independent independent india where the a massive operation has gone against hmm. this entire network the web of conspiracy the web of terror where everybody feeds on each other there are covers on the front they just like urban naxals have a cover for the naxals the violent naxals we have democratic parties so called we have got so called secular parties who are giving cover to these people and that had also be exposed i think by not banning simi and letting people keep on opening their mouth and exposing themselves mm. one of the important strategy was to let these people more and more people get exposed and mm. let them come out and we know who is supporting whom i have seen such farcical debates going on yeah. about why what is the comparison between rss and pf pf there is no comparison mm. rss is a highly patriotic local organization it has no affiliations worldwide it doesn't encourage violence it doesn't support supplies terrorists as your chart shows hmm. to anywhere to kill people so there is no comparison at all hmm. but still they will carry on and this is my very point that you can crush the uh, what is overground how you take care of people who are providing them cover fire providing them sleeper cells and so, i think this is the area yeah. where these agencies seem to have R- R- ratan chandra ji let me ask you this Uh, like abhi ji abhijit majumdar was reading a passage from that mission 2047 document where they said let's use constitution ambedkar and some of these common words and and these angles to try and hide our actual agenda that is of pan islam yeah. do you believe yes. that this entire aspect of trying to target hindus hindustan people of india rss is a great foil use rss hindutva to to go ahead and say no we are delineating hindu and hindutva we are going after only rss hindus are good people but rss and rss people are bad people so is this a very convenient narrative that's being stitched because you see political parties and political leaders also singing the same song see this game of trying to differentiate intellectual gymnastics or trying to differentiate uh, hindutva and hinduism was very clearly out in the open when dismantling hindutva conferences took place in usa where they said we don't worry we don't differentiate between hindutva and hinduism you want to crush hindus you use any excuse or mm-hmm. some such words of that kind which have been clearly recorded in the seminars mm-hmm. secondly in birmingham what did the guy say you give up rss you give bjp we will protect you or rather we will not trouble you so clearly they are worried about organized hindus because hinduism is the only or essence of hinduism or hinduness is the only foil which will uh, which will try to fight this highly supremacist uh, exclusivist idea and philosophy because we believe in pluralism we believe in inclusiveness we believe in giving respect to all the religions so this is the big roadblock for these exclusivist religions mm. that is the reason they are trying to make rss a whipping boy and unfortunately secular lobby supports them because nowhere anywhere mm. where rss or uh, bjp has gone you have seen atrocities on muslims there have been more riots under congress right. there have been uh, we if you remember partition the suffering people were all hindus and sikhs and it was under congress forget about others even in kashmir it was under congress and secular parties that there was continuous aggression against hindus which finally led to exodus and nobody came for it nobody talked about it media was not able to talk about that so this is the condition of india which is slowly turning and people can see through the game that basically it is an ideology which is trying to take us back to 7th century hmm. and trying to say that this something belongs to because of hindus hmm. because there is no rss right. during mopla rats there is no rss in direct action there is no rss in entire 1400 years of history when crores of people lost their lives hmm. and so, civilization so was totally destroyed so you're saying the agenda the the faces may be same but like we drew the parallels here on the inf- uh, information and inputs that come that's coming from top government sources the muslim brotherhood and pfi had similar agenda so you're saying that this yeah. pan islamist agenda is something which precedes or predates even rss or any other uh, likely uh, uh, outfit like that so that's your point of view and uh, there may be many who would agree with you but we've got two more angles to cover i've just got 10 minutes so i'm going to go back to our guests one by one again quickly just bringing through one more aspect of the pfi how well oiled the machinery this is this is not just one organization the pfi is well oiled machinery let's try and look at this again investigations editor manoj gupta getting us these details from the from the government sources these are the various wings the campus front of india sdpi national women front of india 
these are just some of their organizations. They have nearly 15, 15 different organizations. What's their job? Their purpose is to handle ideology and affairs of the PFI. Who are the sources of funds? Shamsul Ulema Arabic College, Shamsul Ulema Islamic Education Trust, Sadat Vakil, Zirkswalat Majlis, you have Madina Saqaf, Fatil Islamia, and Sunni Student Foundation. These are the sources from where they are generating a lot of funds. They have 15 frontal organizations who will manage the ideology and affairs, including the All, All India Imam Council religions. Now, let's try and look at not just the source of funds, uh, also <clears throat> the purpose. Then, so I'm just going to read out some more details which uh, we've not put out here. Now, how did they start? How did they put out, how did they become so big and how did they grow their tentacles so vast, SPYG? Because they have Rehab India Foundation, that is their charity wing. Then the outfit of the PFI is community development, that's their job. Programs, Green Valley Foundation. You have a national lawyers network, SDTU is a trade union wing, Women India Movement, Satya Sarani, Muslim Relief Network Charity, Junior Friends of India, which is their kids wing. They have Darul Kharda. These are so many outfits. Uh, Mr. Nasiman, look at the names. Uh, one is really attracted by the names, they, as if they are charitable organizations. As mm. if they are, uh, look at Campus Fund of India, uh, Campus Front of India, mm. uh, uh, BFI. Uh, so, so, so from student, student Islamic movement, then to Indian Mujahideen, they become popular front of India. So, they become Campus so Front of India. Nambi yeah, yeah. yeah, Dekhe, uh, this is this is a cover. And undertake all the activities. Their their truth has come out in that uh, Patna, hmm. the document of uh, 2047, hmm. uh, Gazwe in to be done in by 2047. Hmm. Now the uh, intention has come out, but look at the front. Front is as if it is charitable organization. It is students' welfare organization. It is women welfare organization. It is charitable trust of the Muslims, which hmm. is not the truth. They have, as you were mentioning, uh, they have international linkages with brotherhood, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, with Turkey, with, uh, in fact, one country has not been mentioned here, China. Hmm. Uh, th th there was a funding where China would never like India's growth story to uh, succeed. Hmm. And they, uh, they, they, they have links even in China, funding is coming. Yeah, and, five lakh rupees uh, was course, given uh, to one of them who was found with explosives. Yes, mm. and uh, of course uh, our uh, ne immediate neighbor Pakistan is definitely very, very uh, well involved. Uh, mm. See, uh, last 16, 17 years these activities were going on uh, uh, initially in Kerala, then tentacles spread to uh, neighboring states like Tamil Nadu, Karnataka uh, and Andhra. And uh, ideally action should have been taken when it was spreading mm its tentacles uh, uh, from Kerala uh, to the other southern states. In fact, it should have been crushed then and there. But then, unfortunately, uh, it was able to establish its uh, linkages and its offices all across the country, as uh, even to the northeast and Delhi and Rajasthan and UP and Bihar. Mm. And uh, I, I, I think uh, a lot of damage has been done uh, but uh, still, I must admire the kind of uh, operation which has been undertaken today uh, by the Honorable Home Minister's uh, team mm. and uh, Mr. Doval personally monitored it. I think uh, this was required and uh, everyone was wondering why action was not being taken. I think a lot of, lot of uh, logistic and a lot of uh, uh, intelligence and uh, research work, uh, investigative work had undergone. And that required time because but, ultimately but sir, ek, ek, ek question stay, I have I have I have limited time but Vaid sahab, I have a question you know जब building illegal जगह पे illegal building बन रही है तो building बनने क्यों देते हैं बनने के बाद तोड़ने जाते हैं इसको पहले ही तोड़ देना चाहिए था इसको बनने नहीं देना चाहिए था in our in our country we have this thing कि बनने दो बनने दो बनने दो उसके बाद जाके तोड़ेंगे beat a building or beat organizations outfits like this इनको पहले कर I tend to agree with you in fact if you ask me that is unfortunately our culture. Uh, you must nip the uh, trouble in the part itself. And it, uh, it right time pass. It took advantage of the uh, leftist government in Kerala. Mm. And I think uh, uh, 
uh, a nation expected the Kerala government itself to act at that time, but unfortunately, uh, no action was taken, and uh, it, it was able to build linkages and build other partners mm -hmm. and uh, grew like anything. Uh, in fact, in front of our eyes, when we knew everything, it was spreading its tentacles and ultimately causing so much of harm. And right. today, it has become a monster. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, we need to, uh, uh, as you rightly said, uh, they, they have a lot of funding and uh, they will raise a battery of lawyers and highly paid lawyers who, who will defend them. I think uh, we need to have strong evidence and ultimately it has to stand the scrutiny of the court. Well, let's hope it does. I quickly will take you through the next exclusive angle before we bring in uh, Sushant Sarin and Arthi Tikku and uh, Abhijit Majumdar, possibly, hopefully, for one final quick comment each. Now, this is how they're organized on social media and their web strategy. Try and understand this. They're very strong, but they're very cleverly handled social media presence. What they do is they incite sentiments against the government, BJP and the RSS. They try and rabble rouse. Further narrative of Muslim suppression is, is created and they push it. They don't openly profess jihad, but further it as a last resort, saying, Ab koi tarika nahi bacha, ab khud khade hoke ladna padega, ab nahi ladenge to kab ladenge, abhi sabak nahi sikhaya, to phir dekho, hum hi khatam ho jayenge. This is what is said. I'm not asking you to fight, but if you don't do it now, you don't have an option. That, that's the tone that is adopted. Senior leadership doesn't post inflammatory content from their own handles. What they do is they get fake posts, fake handles are created. They retweet. They don't post it. Either. They retweet, endorse, like, share, etc. And then after the uh, material is uh, posted, then these accounts are uh, created few hours before the post and then they become few hours later, these accounts become inactive. So it's a very smart strategy of shoot and scoot and fire from somebody else's shoulder. Sushant Sareen. Yeah, so, uh, you know, in many ways, uh, Anand, uh, there's nothing very... Uh, you know, original in what these guys are doing. There are other terrorist groups which have done similar, which have adopted similar uh, tactics and similar measures, creating a web of organizations, uh, you know, uh, getting, uh, and it's not just countries, you know, it's charities, for example, in the Middle East and other places hmm. where people will very readily support them, partly because of the kind of poisonous propaganda which has happened within our own country, hmm. that, you know, everything, this country is a fascist country and, you know, all those familiar tropes that are used by uh, these woke and crazy fellows uh, mm. on you know who pretend like i said earlier who pretend to be liberal and progressive and then you will have people uh, including in uh, you know i don't want to name the institution but who will say that well this is just dissent what is wrong with it who will defend uh, you know the most bizarre things mm. in the name of plurality of the society in the name of tolerance uh, and they will tolerate terrorists in the name of tolerance mm. you know there was a retired supreme court judge who had once uh, passed a ruling uh, that, uh, and, and a crazy character, uh, you know, who had passed a ruling that uh, you, even just because you're a member of a, a terrorist organization does not mean that you have committed a terrorist act. <laughs> that means you, uh, the book cannot be thrown against you because, uh, you know, you're a member of Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Hmm. So, you know, we've had these kind of bizarre characters uh, hmm. in the judiciary. We've had, uh, you know, you were talking about why do you let an uh, illegal building come up? Because you make money on both occasions. You make <laughs> money when the building is coming up and you make money when the building is being brought down. Brought down. Mm -hmm. And you don't give a damn that whether the country is going to be coming up or coming down as long as you are getting your money. Mm. So, you know, you've had, you, uh, I think Mr. Ratan Charda mentioned Abdul Nasir Madni. Yeah. It was at that point of time that you should have nipped this in the bud. Correct. Because Abdul Nasir Madni is in many ways a kind of a, a father figure for many of these yes. groups. Right? Their and there was a whole lot of organizations in South of India mm. which had never had the kind of uh, religious tensions which are very common in north of India. But Correct. in the south of India, you had a whole lot of these radical organizations which I suspect, and I, I, I we need to study a little more, a lot of them finally merged into organizations like the PFI or were, right. you know, assimilated or were became affiliates or became associates of organizations like the PFI. Right. So it's it was a very clever strategy, not very original, but very clever. Right. And Hiding behind familiar tropes, hmm. democracy, dissent, you know, Got secularism, it. progressive values, and then you have what you have. True. Final 30 seconds I have, I have to wind up, so I'll give that to Abhijit Majumdar. Yes, Abhijit. 
Yeah, and then the, uh, there are truckloads of cases against the PFI, right? From PJ Joseph's, uh, you know, cutting off its uh, his hand to hmm. uh, its involvement. I mean, of the 66 uh, Indians who went to fight for the ISIS, many of them have PFI links. To you know, uh, uh, right? Uh, this month, the whole Pulwari Sharif module, which was busted, has uh, links, and they were trying to, you know, planning to do something big uh, during Mr. Uh, PM hmm. uh, Narendra Modi's visit. But the point is that, you know, that could all be uh, proven in court, but we need to figure out, again, I say people in uh, intelligentsia, media, etc., who are being used right. or who are part of this entire movement, hmm. you know, who have, uh, you know, for instance, the whole Mukush Sharma case, hmm. how it panned out, how it unfolded is sinister. It, it you know, it, it required a, a huge amount of right. planning journalists going to see uh, right. you know shahin bag and uh, saying things which actually absolutely mirrored the document the pfi document right so these these are the you know that is the next stage i think see there, there uh, is and and i'm sure the intelligence agencies will uh, there, there is this there is this data. entire theory of uh, implied culpability you know what if this person is going to say so if a sadhvi ritumbra can be blocked from giving her lectures or sermons or visiting a particular place because of what she could say or what she has been associated with then that should apply to all these entities and all these people let the judges the, who are also talking about implied culpability and implied liability uh, in in certain cases apply their minds in this case when it comes to national security and the interest of the country those who have, there should be implied liability and implied culpability on all of these people also. Otherwise, junk it all together. I leave you with that thought. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Aarti ji, NK Sood ji, SP Vaitsaf, Sushant Sareen, Ratan Sharda ji and Abhijit Majumdar. Thank you very much. Very engaging conversation. When we come back, we get you some more insights on this entire nationwide crackdown. Stay with us here on The Right Stand.